Hello everyone, Devin Rex Fart here. Welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to finally finish the last uh, three prompts of the Bridget Coopson Gel Printing Challenge. And those prompts are Random Found Object, Handmade Masks, and Rope. So for the Random Found Object, I'm going to be using this um, seashell. I've already been practicing, that's why it's colored on that side, but the seashell is my random found object. For rope, I'm actually just going to use this shoelace. For mask, I'm going to be doing a fish. I just outlined a fish and I cut it out um, of just some cardstock. And so we've got a little fish. And the reason I chose a fish is I'm going to be printing on a canvas bag that I found at... Michael's it was on sale for five dollars Canadian so we're going to use that and I've never uh, jelly printed on fabric before and this is quite coarse so I'm not sure how it's going to work and the reason I decided to do that is I found these fabric paints at um, HomeSense and they were quite reasonable um, so that's the brand and they were eight dollars um, Canadian again and I thought that was uh a good little assortment to try a nice little variation of color and I believe you have to iron them um, to set it but let's go to the English instruction shall we there we go um, place a barrier such as cardboard or baking paper uh, so that it doesn't bleed through um, this is quite thick it's not going to bleed through but I did put in a um, just a, a mat in here to give it a nice firm surface for the jelly printing um, create your artwork, let it dry. Once dry, place a cloth over the design and iron for three to five minutes to fix your artwork. Um, so I probably won't show that step, but I'll plan to do that to um, make it a bit more durable. The other items I found at Michael's that I thought would be fun were these um, fabric pens. Uh, this one is a dual tip marker and it's just black and it's made for fabric. And then this one um, is kind of cool. It's a puffy velvet, um, also made for fabric. And this one, after you put it on, you um, heat it. So I'll use my heat gun. I did do a few tests with that. Um, look on here, I did some little circles. So it's, it's a bit finicky how much um, paint you put on it, but um, I think that'll be, kind of fun and I also got these other fabric paints at Michael's on sale on clearance um, and these are gold so I'm not sure if I'm going to use these or not um, this set that I bought does have a gold uh, this one is dimensional so that might be interesting to add some details so um, I never like I said I've never done this before so we'll be experimenting together and let's get started so here's my first attempt. Uh, I spilt a bit of the blue, so I'm just using my five by seven jelly plate to um, mix up the cerulean blue with a little bit of black. So I wanted more muted colors, it's sort of a grungy beach bag look. And I mix it to make it like uniform before I add it to the eight by 10 plate, which I have mounted on a glass uh, cutting board so that I'll be able to pick it up and use it more like a stamp. And I got this idea from PM Artist Studios. I'll link them below. Patricia has most of her jelly plates mounted onto uh, thick plastic boards, which I don't have any, so I just used a cutting board from the kitchen, which I don't recommend. Don't use your kitchen and craft supplies together. Uh, don't mix them up. But uh, this is what I had, so this is what I used. So here I just put the, um, the rope slash uh, shoelace on top of the paint, and I pressed it down with a bit of uh, paper towel to give sort of a pattern. And um, here's where I ran into difficulty. So here's the learning curve. So I pressed and pressed and it just didn't seem to be adhering. I think it was because the um, weave is quite thick on this canvas board and also the seam there didn't help. So I do another coat with just the blue this time and I put the mask to keep the spot where I want the fish to be. And again, I ran into the same situation. So uh, third time, hopefully is a charm. You'll see here, I just do with some black, just around the center where I had trouble getting the impression um, to be more um, 
accurate or distinct, I suppose. So I'm still trying to do waves with the shoelace. Uh, this is a bit of a fail in terms of the shoelace prompt because by the time I put four layers, uh, spoiler alert, uh, you really can't see the shoelace waves. So yeah, the struggle was real. So here I found the trick to use with this canvas bag is I actually stuck my hand underneath and pushed upwards. Well, there we go. I think that's working. And that worked a lot better. I think if the fabric had been thinner and a tighter weave, like a t-shirt, it would have worked uh, fine, just stamping it down. But with the thick bag, um, this worked much better. So here I've got a good impression of the fish, so I'm happy with that. I'm still missing some areas, so I decide just to add a little bit more blue um, to clean off that um, remaining black from the plate. And I add some blue, do it one last time. Now I have my technique um, perfected. So um, here we go, fourth time. And it, uh, I finally got the hang of it. And I think that uh, fish mask is going to be cool in another maybe mixed media piece. So there we go. I'm happy. Yay. Here's our fish mask. So that's kind of cool. That's going to take a while to dry. That's pretty thick. So my plan now is to use my circular jelly plate to make the fish body. This is a burnt sienna and then gold and then lamp black. So I put down a base of the brown and I use the shell to make some little scale-like textures. And again, this is a little bit of a fail. Like when I practice on paper, the scales, you could see the lines, but when I smushed it onto the canvas bag, it just kind of went blobby. So um, out of the three prompts, the only one that really worked was the mask. Um, even that one was a bit iffy, but I had fun um, finishing up this bag. So I hope you watch the rest of this. Um, then I add some black uh, scales. So I load up my five by seven plate with some of the black paint and I use the um, shell again to make some impressions of scales. Uh, if this would have been on paper, it would look really cool. <laughs> uh, maybe I'll put an insert here of what my practice piece kind of looked like to give you the idea of what I was going for. But you know, happy accidents. Uh, I ended up doing some cool doodles over top, which um, you'll see later. And um, it was a fun experience, a learning experience. And as artists, that's what we try to do, right? We push ourselves, we learn, um, we try new things. Here, I just use a bit of a paper towel so that the fish body doesn't go too much on the blue. And um, pretty happy with that. I mean, it's a bit smudgy, but it make it work. So now I'm just painting in the rest of the fish using the fabric paint. So this is the gold from the set. And um, I'm also watching YouTube at the same time. So every now and then you see my hand go over to the left. So I'm typing in guesses at uh, a stream uh, where Janet M. Young was playing Pictionary. And maybe I'll, I'll link that below too, because it's a lot of fun. Uh, and then I decide to use the other fabric paint that I bought, the other gold. It was a bit of a different color of gold, so I thought, what the heck? And it was nice and shiny, so we added that to the edges, made some little lips. And then this fabric marker worked really great. Like, it had a brush tip and a um, bullet tip, and the brush tip was really good, uh, even on the canvas. A few places I had to go over it twice, but it was really quite easy to use, so I was very happy with that and I doodle on some bubbles and I paint those with some gold and I just had fun um, putting in all these little details and you know the fish is a little bit uh, grungy looking but that's okay um the actually the color of the fish that brown really reminded me of my recent trip to Prince Edward Island if you've ever been there the um sand is like a red brown actually the dirt on the island is this red brown uh, maybe I'll put a little picture up there um, of how it looks uh, there, it's just very different. Okay, now I'm adding some dimensional gold paint. Uh, I did put a little white highlight in the fish eye, and here I'm just doodling on some scales, and this dimensional paint was also super easy to work with. It worked really well, and I doodle around the edge of the bubbles as well. And next I add some more doodling with just that plain fabric marker.
and I had to be careful not to uh, rest my hand on the gold doodles. If I'd had a plan going in, I probably would have done the gold doodles last, but I just kind of was uh, winging it, just um, going with the flow. And here I used that puffy velvet uh, paint. So it's a bit tricky. Um, I did show this earlier, so I just popped this back on here, but um, you have to put enough on to get it to puff up. So, and it's one of those um, markers that you have to kind of push down to release the ink. So I found it would put little blobs down. So what I did is I put the blobs on my scrap paper and I just used that pools of the paint with the marker to bank my lines and I'd go back in and I'd make them thicker uh, to get enough paint on there to get the um, the velvet puffy effect and a few more dots on the fin and the instructions said to let it dry before you heat activate the puffy paint so I used that time to doodle a border around using the other marker and um, like I said it was just really smooth that um, marker I, I really recommend it okay so I'm gonna try to heat up the um black I think it's mostly dry we'll see how it works and then, and then I'll decide if I want to use more of it or not. heat up the black fluffy velvet paint oh, it's working it's working so I'm muting it and speeding up a little bit you can see that you can kind of see the puffing up there so it was really fun and cool to work with and there's the eyeball all right, so it worked. You gotta be careful though, the gold kind of um, popped a little bit there. Heated up too much, so I just pushed it down there. So that's kind of cool. Look at that, you can see, I don't know if you can see the eyeball and the fin there. It's got some puffy paint. It's got a bit of dimension there. And I did those little dots on the end here. But I had to um, put quite a bit. I think I'll add some black dots and some gold dimensional. But I'll do the black dots first so that I don't um, explode the gold. So ideally, I would have done the ironing step to fix all the flat paint before I added these dimensional um, elements. But um, I just got, it, got carried away and I wanted to get it done. But I would recommend doing it more in steps. It is super fun heating up that puffy paint though, I have to say, and just adding more of the gold. This definitely was a learning um, process, but um, I thoroughly enjoyed making this little bag. I haven't done anything on fabric before. So here's our final uh, product, a little fish on a canvas bag, be a nice little beach bag. I did sort of muted colors, um, added some dimensional paint and some little, um, so that velvet, I don't know if you can see how it's 3D, and the gold is dimensional. And some doodling, love me some doodles. So my channel does include um, other things besides jelly printing videos, but this was the last video in my series for the Bridget Coopson uh, Gel Printing Challenge, and I had a lot of fun doing it. I hope you had fun um, watching me uh, struggle <laughs> with this. Thanks so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, share, all those YouTube-y things. Bye for now.